be separated and the students uh, actually worked on a voluntary basis. And he's putting it on little by little so that there's an even mixture so that the people on the top of the belt on the line up there aren't overwhelmed by material when it gets to them. Hi, my name is Sean. And I'm Joe. We are two college students trying to figure out the recycling process. Why, you ask? Well, according to the EPA, the average U.S. citizen produces 1,600 pounds of trash per year per person, which is more than 220 tons of waste being generated per year. Currently, the U.S. population is estimated to be just over 300 million. With an annual growth rate of 1.3%, the population is predicted to increase by one-third by the year 2050. Increasing population means increasing waste, as well as a higher demand for resources. There have been many attempts to decrease waste production, but the most significant has been recycling. But what truly happens to the stuff we recycle? Is it really helping the environment? Or is the recycling process just complete bullshit? I think that some people, you know, it's instead of carrying the thing 25 feet over to a recycling thing, it's easier to just drop it in the trash. You know, and it's a cultural thing. If at home nobody bothers to do it, nobody seems to care. I wasn't raised with that value, mm -hmm. but I've come to feel that it's important. I so see no need to just waste things and fill landfills with things that are perfectly reusable if processed and turned back into, you know, material that can be used again. If, if it does actually go into a regular recycling program and it really is put, picked up by a regular recycler, um, then it goes into a truck. It goes to, well now here's where I'm going to start making things <laughs> up. We can. Metal can be recycled. We have a couple scrap yards here in Lancaster and so a hanger, a little appliance, um, you know, maybe you have a keychain that breaks. I don't throw any of that stuff out. It all goes into my metal recycling bin. I think sometimes people are not motivated enough just knowing about landfill and knowing about petroleum and, you know, mining aluminum and, and all the things that it does to the earth. I think maybe that's not enough motivation sometimes for people to take the extra steps to do it. Recycling started at Franklin Marshall College in the late 1980s. Uh, it was a student-driven initiative led by a small group of students. Um, uh, student Brendan Shane, class of 1991, approached Dr. Richard Needler uh, and had a discussion regarding the implementation of the recycling at Franklin and Marshall. Of course, he agreed with the idea and the students uh, implemented the initiative. The students uh, actually worked on a voluntary basis in our warehouse separating all the recyclable material. What happens is students, faculty, staff, whoever um, dispose of their recyclables in the appropriate container and then the custodial staff supports uh, this process by removing the uh, recyclables from the residence halls or whatever building they're located in and then placed outside and then we have a small crew that goes around and collects the recyclables and transports them to a 10 cubic yard dumpster which is placed behind our building uh, and they're placed in there and then from there waste management collects them and takes them to the uh, transfer station to be recycled. Penn Waste is a local recycling and garbage hauler. We collect trash from local businesses and local residences. We pick up in York County, uh, Lancaster County, Dolphin County and Cumberland County. But in this uh, center, we actually get material from all over the country. We get a little bit of material from Canada, and we get it from other counties within the state. His truck is full, so he's coming back to dump the material that he has. The piece of machinery is dumping material onto the conveyor belt, and he's putting it on little by little so that there's an even mixture 
so that the people on the top of the belt on the line up there aren't overwhelmed by material when it gets to them. Okay, this is the first stop on the recycling line. The people that are standing here are pulling out pieces of plastic that don't belong in the mix. They're pulling out plastic bags that can get caught in the machinery that comes later. And they're pulling, you see some things are stuck together that are different materials. They're pulling them apart also. Step two of the process is what we call a screen. The screen here is spinning and it's made out of large discs. And what happens is the cardboard will float on top of these discs while everything else falls underneath of them. This material is coming off of the first screen that we saw with the large discs. The cardboard floats on top of those discs and comes off at the end of this line while everything else falls below and is separated from this material. Um, the product goes through our single stream recycling facility and when we have just paper, a pile of just cardboard, a pile of bottles, a pile of metal cans, those um, go through a process called baling. And what baling does is it crushes the material, it takes all the air out of it, and it compacts them into very large cubes. Right, this is where the recycling is stored once it's baled. Um, it, it sits here and it waits until we have enough to put in a tractor trailer so we have a whole load of one product, say the, the number one PET plastic bottles which may go to carpet mills or the HDPE bottles which go to gram packaging or gram recycling to be made into new household use chemical type bottles. And when we see we've got enough aluminum to fill up a tractor trailer, uh, we sell it and usually that material goes to Anheuser-Busch. So Anheuser-Busch will send a truck to come and pick it up and then it's is trucked to St. Louis where that material is um, recycled and made into new aluminum cans. So things get collected, transported, sorted, baled, sold, and finally reconstituted. Without this process, bottles, cans, paper, batteries, and metal would end up with the rest of your trash in a landfill, an ocean, and in some instances, an incinerator. So if we don't recycle, what would the world be like in 100 years?